reveals the scope of the investigation. Our first guest tonight joining us to discuss the systemic corruption within the Justice Department and the FBI and the boiling political cauldron at the epicenter of the D.C. swamp, Congressman Matt Gates. He serves on a number of key committees, including Judiciary, Budget, and Armed Services. Great to have you with us. Good to be here. Your thoughts on what is happening right now, it all seems to be moving to, if you will forgive the metaphor, a boil right now in Washington, whether it is in the House, whether it's in the White House. I never would have believed we would be getting reports about potential human intelligence being collected on a rival presidential campaign. I never would have thought we would have had Justice Department officials attacking a staff member who has worked so hard with our office and many other offices to expose the corruption and the crimes of the deep state. But Lou, I would have never thought that cash at the Democratic National Committee would ultimately be converted into a warrant to spy yeah. on American citizens. And so we live in these very rare and unusual times where the bureaucrats at the FBI and Department of Justice believe that the Congress, the elected representatives of the people, answer to them rather than the other way around. And, and answer they will one way or the other come th this fall. But interestingly, Paul Ryan doesn't seem to be concerned. And their conference has allowed Paul Ryan to resign the speakership, but retain leadership of the conference and uh, hold great sway over the likely outcome for each member who's uh, running for election this year. Well, I think that we've got to be a lot stronger in making demands because if we don't and we lose the House because we've not demonstrated sufficient vigor in our oversight responsibilities, the Democrats will. I mean, Lou, we know how the Democrats play this game. What they'll do is they'll start demanding documents, and if those documents don't show up, they'll start the impeachment proceedings. Whereas we've engaged in this protracted negotiation over what we have a constitutional obligation to do, and that's demand answers from the executive branch. So why is the conference staying with a weak need, obviously unimaginative and ineffective speaker who cannot drive an agenda or prepare the conference for those midterm elections? Well, I think that we've got a number of members who are very concerned over the increased Democrat intensity that we've seen. I do have to note, though, Lou, mm -hmm. we've been successful in making some of our key arguments to the public. Six months ago, only 44 percent of Americans believed that the Mueller probe was politically motivated. Today, that number is over half to 53 percent of Americans, according to CBS, that believe that Mueller's probe is politically motivated now, so as much as I'd love to give you credit for that mm -hmm. it is President Trump who day in and day out is uh, attacking fake news attacking the Mueller witch hunt I don't hear Paul Ryan or Mitch McConnell saying a, a single doggone well, well, word we always are encouraging them to be more supportive of our efforts but look members of Congress have been conducting a lot of these investigations and uncovering a lot of these truths and look at the consequence Jim Comey fired Deputy Director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, fired and referred for criminal prosecution. Counterintelligence Chief Peter Strzok, demoted and reassigned. His girlfriend, Lisa Page, gone. Leaker James Baker, counsel for the FBI, gone. So time and again, we're taking bites out of the deep state. But I think you're right. Institutionally, the Congress has got to be stronger now. Otherwise, Nancy Pelosi will get the speaker gavel. Let me be clear. We give on this broadcast, Devin Nunes, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, uh, the, uh, the hero's uh, uh, position within the Pantheon. Uh, it's a small Pantheon in Washington, D.C. right now. Uh, but there are so many congressmen with guts like you in principle uh, who are doing a lot. But Nunes has been outstanding. But Paul Ryan has not stood tall. He has not stood loudly in support of this president or against the Department of Justice and the FBI. He is weak need. He is a trembling figure in the, uh, in the twilight of his uh, tenure as speaker. How much can the Republican Party stand from this man? And we hear there's a discharge petition on its way in which he is basically trying to pretend, make it look as though he's been carried uh, across the finish line to amnesty, which has been his goal for years and years and years without a quid pro quo. Well, I'll take some exception to the notion that okay. the discharge petition would absolutely lead to amnesty. The discharge petition says we're going to take a vote on everybody's immigration bill. The conservatives have the good lat immigration bill that ends chain migration, that instills E-Verify into our system, that builds the wall, all the things that we care about, and takes care of DACA, but does it in a conservative way. 
The Democrats can have their proposals. The liberal Republicans can have their proposals. But you know what I'm sick of? I'm sick of not taking votes. I'm sick of debating immigration and talking about it, but not doing anything about it. This president ran on an immigration mm -hmm. agenda, and it's time that we deliver for him as a Congress. I, I, I think it's wonderful that you would deliver for him, but I'm right now more concerned about delivering for the American people, because right now, uh, DACA is amnesty. And DACA amnesty without quid pro quo, without any condition. Uh, the Goodlot bill, Goodlot hasn't been, he's been uh, absent uh, in abstentia uh, for out his, throughout his tenure as chairman of judiciary. I know you can't remark on that, but I can. The reality is that we have a president who is right at the threshold of securing every major policy victory. And it looks as though the globalist forces are circling and are moving in to suppress what should be a moment of exhilarating victory for this president and for the nation. It should be. And frankly, if we were 10 percent as effective as the Congress, as this president was, we would have done so much more to advance his agenda. Alone, the president has reduced illegal border crossings by about 40 percent. So if we would do the things he's called for, ending chain migration, doing E-Verify, making sure that people are working in this country legally, then I really think this is a solvable problem. The Democrats want you to believe that oh, we really can't solve it, yeah. but we can. I agree with you 100 percent, and this president has demonstrated that you can solve much of it. Uh, again, the threat uh, against uh, America first, his, uh, uh, his policies, his doctrine uh, is all too real tonight, and uh, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. As always, thank you very much. Matt Gates. Up next.